I'm surprised and shocked to read your ideas about Taj Mahal. I think that they appear to be very illogical. I have to ask you some certain questions. I'm very much disturbed. Yeah, You've gone against the established, well-known dictionaries. And what, what evidence, what evidence is there to support that the Taj Mahal was built 500 years prior to the birth of Shah Jahan? How do you say that? How do you justify that? There is a Sanskrit inscription by Raja Paramarthi Dev and his time, the time when he lived, is 500 years before Shah Jahan. And that inscription says that Raja Paramarthi Dev built a uh, Shiva temple in Allah. And because that Shiva, uh, one of the names of Shiva is Tejolinga. And that Tejolinga was installed, consecrated in this building called Dharma. So you mean to say that uh, the, uh, one of the names of Shiva is Teja? Uh, Teja Ji. Teja Ji. The local people in India, around Agra, they call Shiva as Teja Ji. You mean to say uh, around Agra? Yes. So they generally they, they prefer to call Teja Ji instead Teja. of uh, Shiva. Shiva. So because how she, can you say that? How does it uh, uh, become then Taj Mahal? By wrong Muslim pronunciation. It was a mistaken pronunciation of... But well, what, what, what is the real pronunciation then? Tejo Linga. Hmm. Shiva Linga are of several types. Yeah. And the, the type of Shiva Linga which was installed in this particular building was Tejo Linga. Uh, there are various uh, Tejoling, Apling, Prithviling, Vayuling, Akashling. Yeah. There are five types of Lingas. Of this Tejolinga was installed, consecrated yeah. in this particular building in Agra. And therefore it was called Tejo Mahalai. Mahalai means a great abode yeah. of the Tejolinga of Shu. Mahalai, what language are you speaking? Sanskrit. Sanskrit. Alai means what? Alai means abode. 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 Can you give me some some example about that? They, they were like Himalaya Granthalaya. Ah, so what do you mean by Himalaya? Himalaya means where there is uh, this... Him means ice, ice I know that. Yeah. So it is always covered with ice. Himalaya. Ah, means a house of... Store of... House of... Alai means abode of snow. Ah, abode of snow. And Devala means about of God. Granthala means about of uh, volumes, mm -hmm. books. So how does it become then a uh, Taj Mahal? Because it was Tejo Linga was there. Uh -huh. So it was Taj Mahal. Mahalai. Tejo Mahalai. Uh, Tejo Mahalai. Uh, so, Tejo Mahalai is popularly because of Muslim this uh, deterioration in the language pronunciation. Tejo Mahalai became Taj Mahal. Ah, uh, that is... I just uh, cannot understand that, but anyhow, <laughs> for time being, I'll take... I'll again come for interviewing you, and I'll be... I'll try to uh, say I want more clarification, but I am really shocked. Uh, tell me, what uh, are the textual evidences there that the Taj Mahal was a Hindu temple? How do you say that? How do you justify that? It is a seven-story building. People think that it's only one story, it's wrong. It's a seven-story building. And we have a tradition, Hindu tradition, mm -hmm. is of seven stories mm -hmm. and octagon. Any building which is of traditional Hindu shape is always octagonal and seven-story. Octagonal means the floor is octagonal or what is octagonal? Building is octagonal. 
means that the floor, if we the, see... The, no, the... Uh, walls? Yes, the walls of the first story. They have uh, four... It is a... Um, they were towers uh -huh. on the four sides. And they have two faces each. Mm -hmm. So four corners having two faces each makes an octagon. I got this book left, in which there are 118 series of numbered proofs about Taj Mahal having been built 500 years before Shahjan as a Shiva temple. What architectural evidence is there that the Taj was a Hindu temple? First, there is the inscription, Sanskrit inscription of Raja Paramadhi Dev, who lived about 500 years before Shahjan. That inscription says that this Raja Paramadhi Dev's minister of selection, he built a Shiva temple and it was crystal white and it was so beautiful that Shahjan, uh, that uh, Shiva, when consecrated in that temple, he never wanted to go to Kailas. Such is the Sanskrit inscription that even it pleased, the building was so beautiful, so nice, that it pleased even Lord Shiva, who didn't want to go to Kailas. That is the Sanskrit inscription which I have quoted in my book. Which book is that? The Taj Mahal is Tejo Mahalaya Shiva Temple. This is the book. Can we go, have you written it in detail? Yes. It has 360 pages and 86 photos of different facets and different stories in the Taj Mahal. And it is a traditional Hindu Vedic formula. Just as even in modern uh, English terminology, we say a person is on the seventh heaven. So seventh heaven is the highest uh, strata. And therefore, this Taj Mahal is seventh story. And uh, it has hundreds of rooms which have all been closed ever since Shahjan took it over and uh, buried his wife in it. The archaeology department of the government of India is misleading everybody and they are not showing all the seven stories of the Taj Mahal to visitors, though they charge an entrance fee. How and many rooms have been actually locked or closed, in your opinion? About a thousand maybe. Is about a thousand rooms. Because in the seven stories, even the marble platform <laughs> has 13 artists uh, on the length side and breadth side. So if you multiply 33 by 33, there are 33 artists. 33 by 33, so 1,079 rooms, or at least that much area, is in the marble platform itself. Mm -hmm. Plus the other rooms in all the other six stories. The ma marble platform has that much space which could be divided because there are actual arches on the uh, length side and breadth side and they are almost equal. So 33 into 33, 1079 rooms even in the marble platform. And below the marble platform there are two stories which you can see only from the Yamuna river side because at the back side is Yamuna. And the people who come from Agra city to Taj Mahal, they, are, they come on the marble platform, where the marble platform begins, from a redstone courtyard. So they have to remove their shoes at the redstone courtyard and then ascend the marble steps of the Taj Mahal platform. But if you go to the back side of the platform and look down, then the Yamuna is two stories below that. And therefore, the marble platform begins on the third story. So there are two other stories below the marble platform, which can be seen from the back side. So in all there are seven stories. Five stories in marble and two stories in red, red stone. And they contain maybe thousands of rooms, as I showed you.
as I told you, even in the Mahabharata there are 1079s, uh, actually maybe divided into rooms or maybe that much area. Because unless you open the marble for form, the 13 arches on the length and breadth side, you won't know whether they are actually rooms or they are big halls. But why are they locked? Now because the question was that when Shahjan took it over and um, um, buried his wife in it, then how, how, how many servants it will require to every, every day watch and uh, sweep? First sweep and then watch the seven stories of the Tagma. Thousands of rooms. And that is why he barred, not only locked, he barred them with bricks. And those photos of those barred bricks I have in my, this book, The Tagma is a Temple Palace. It has 86 photos. And some of those 86 photos show how the uh, five stories of the seven stories, how they have been barred with brick and lime. <coughs> Arches, windows, they have been barred. And therefore it is very dark inside, inside those uh, five stories or six stories which are locked. And Muslims all say that why there is uh, this uh, moon and star on the dome? Uh, why, why that moon and star is there if there should be a Hindu Hindu symbol or something like that, yes. but that is an Islamic uh, symbol. The, that <coughs> concept and that propaganda by Islam is totally wrong. What is on the dome? A trident, it's a trident. And with a coconut uh, kept on a uh, kalash and mango leaves under it. So it is a totally Hindu concept, a totally Hindu symbol which is being misinterpreted by people saying that it is a, a moon. It's not a moon. It's not a moon and it, there's no star there. It has no star. So instead of star you mean... It is a uh, trident. It's a trident. A trident which is the symbol of Lord Shiva or which is the weapon of Lord Shiva which he carries in his hand. trident is what? Trishul. Or Trishul. And that's the symbol of Shiva. Shiva. So Shiva always carries a trident in his house, in his hands. <laughs> that is what is the documentary evidence? And why did Shah Jahan requisition the, these, this building? Where was the need for that? Shah Jahan had two motives in seizing the Taj Mahal and um, annexing it. One motive was that the, a big Shiva temple may be lost to the Hindus and may be converted in a tomb, Muslim tomb. For instance, one very interesting thing, when I began to lecture on this, that the Tarnal is not a Muslim tomb but a Hindu temple, then residents of Agra were Hindus. They told me a very fine uh, tradition. They said that our ancestors used to visit five Shiva temples in Agra in the month of Shravan and then take their evening meal. That is all the Hindus living in near about Agra. They, in the month of Shravan, which is the rainy season about July, around July, so, it is still a Hindu custom in Agra that Hindu residents of Agra mm -hmm. who are orthodox, who carry out some orthodox, follow the orthodox line. In the month of Shravan, the evening meal is to be taken after visiting five Shiva shrines. But nowadays they say the Hindus of Agra said they have only four Shiva shrines and we didn't know which was the fifth Shiva shrine. So when Mr. Hope, you discovered that Taj Mahal is a Hindu palace, then we suddenly realized that our ancestors who used to visit five Shiva temples before their meal in the month of Shravan, evening meal. So this is the fifth temple which you have showed and we are very happy. I am now going to tell you some written proofs. One is Bhatsanam, which is the official history 
of Shahjahan by written by his co-conqueror Mullah Abdul Hamid Lahori. In that he says that Shahjahan purposely built Muntaz in the Tazi Makam so that the world may admire. So Tazi Makam, that is the building called Taj, but Taj is the wrong pronunciation of Tejo Mahalaya. And then, why did uh, Bari Muntaz first to uh, destroy the temple, sort of the temple uh, to change a Hindu temple into a mausoleum so that Orthodox Hindus may no longer be able to use it. That was one motive as a Muslim that Shahjan wanted to convert it, uh, convert a Shiva temple into a um, mausoleum. And the other proof is that when Shahjan was still on the throne and Aurangzeb was a prince, then he was by Shahjan sent him an order that Aurangzeb, who was at that time, his name was not Aurangzeb, but uh, his name, that title was conferred on him afterwards. So, when Aurangzeb was a prince, he was the governor of Punjab. But Shahjan transferred him to go to the south because Shivaji, uh, the Marathas, were gaining strength in the south. So when Aurangzeb was transferred from Punjab to the Deccan, he, with his uh, uh, followers, etc., elephants, camels, etc., he went on foot uh, from the Punjab to the south. And when he halted in Agra, because they were halting at night, they used to halt in March in the morning. I was talking about two uh, written evidence evidences about the Tarma. One is that Shahjan's own Bhakshanama says that I took this building over from Raja Jai Singh of Jaipur and it was then named, uh, known, that building was known as Raja Man Singh's Mahal. But his grandson Jai Singh was at that time a contemporary of Shahjan and he was the ruler in Jaipur. And because the Jaipur rulers were under the Mughals, therefore Shahjan requisitioned this building. He said that my wife has died and she is to be buried here. But actually Muntaz had died about a thousand six hundred miles south of uh, Agra in Baranpur. And she was actually buried for six months in Baranpur. And when Shah Jahan raised the topic of, uh, on this ground, he requisitioned the buildings in the Maharaja of Jaipur. Because though it was in Agra, it was the property of the Maharaja of Jaipur. So Shah Jahan sent him a letter <coughs> saying that my Begum has died, Muntaz Begum, and I want to bury her in this particular building. His motive was to deprived the Hindus of a big shine. That was one motive. The other motive was the immense wealth that Tarmal contained. For instance, all the seven stories had silver doors and uh, golden railings. There is a description that where the Shivalinga, for instance, I'll tell you how the Tarmal itself is octagonal. Its central room is octagonal. The uh, lattice is octagonal and inside the lattice there was a gold studded, uh, gem studded golden railing around the Shiva and in, in that railing compound the priest used to stay, they sit and carry out the religious um, procedure yeah. to worship Shiva. Then, if you look up from the from the place where there is this uh, tomb of Muntai, then on the ceiling of that octagonal room is there are uh, 
uh, eight direction, the eight directional uh, points, and then there is a sixteen circle of sixteen snakes, because snakes are associated with Shiva, and therefore in the top, those photos are given in, in my book. That uh, about the Shivlinga, there is a um, pole which is hanging from the ceiling, which uh, had a pitcher which used to uh, drop uh, drop water on the Shivlinga as is the tradition. So the that pole in the ceiling has around it eight directional. Uh, arrows and then around those eight directional arrows are sixteen snakes because a shivling is always associated with snakes and around those snakes are thirty two lotuses and then there are sixty four so this uh, Hindu tradition has uh, a um, has octagon and eight and sixteen, all the uh, the uh, multiples of eight, eight, sixteen, uh, twenty-four, and sixty-four, and so on. These are these are the uh, holy symbols. Holy symbols on the ceiling, just above the shielding there. And they are Hindu holy symbols. No, they are holy symbols. All associated with Shiva worship. I was talking about two written proofs. From the Mughal side, one is that Shah Jahan's own official chronicle, the Baksha Nama. It says that Mumtaz had died in Baranpur, and after six, after she was buried there for six months, her dead body was brought to Agra, and it was buried in a Mansingh Mandir. Which was requisitioned from his grandson Jaisir, and in that Muntaz was buried. It is mentioned. No, it is mentioned in Shahjan Bakshana. Then the other proof that the Taj Mahal was built about 500 years before Shahjan is that when Aurangzeb, as a prince, was transferred. As the governor from Punjab to the south, he has he travelled because in those times they had to travel on foot and in palanquins, with accompanied by elephants and horses. camels, horses. So when he during the journey from Panipat to Aurangabad in the Deccan, when Aurangzeb, Prince Aurangzeb. <coughs> when Prince Aurangzeb he camped in Agra, he was shocked because when he went to <coughs> the Taj Mahal premises, he doesn't say Taj Mahal. He has written a letter to his father Shah Jahan saying that uh, Your Majesty or Your Honour, when I was going from Punjab to the south. And I encamped in Agra. I visited that holy tomb, and I was shocked that most of the buildings were leaking or cracking. And therefore, I request because it was 500 years before Shah Jahan that uh, that area was built, Taj Mahal was built, Tejo Mahal as the Tejo Mahal is shown to me. So within those 500 years, it had undergone lot of deterioration. And because it was all Muslim rule, and the okay. temple was a Hindu temple, and they couldn't repair, repair or keep keep in up to date uh, form uh, that entire area, and therefore he says, Huzur, I was shocked to see that the most of the buildings uh, around the tomb are in a bad shape. So some somewhere there are cracks, somewhere there are leaks. And therefore, I request your honour, that is his father Shah Jahan, to have them properly repaired. So these two written evidences, 
One in Bhatshanama, Shah Jan's own chronicle, saying that it was a Hindu temple. Um, and we, we took it over from the Maharaj of Jaipur. And the second original letter. Now this Sanskrit inscription which I have said <coughs> is called Bhateshwar inscription. Because the British scholars of the, and the British rulers of those times uh, found it uh, on the, somewhere on the road. <coughs> this inscription was actually in the garden of the Tharmar, in the center of the garden. Because it says, in Sanskrit it says, Idam Mandiram, this temple. So when that inscription says this temple, it means that the uh, inscription written by Raja Par uh, Paramati Dev's uh, minister, Salakshan, and that inscription, which is called Bhateshwar inscription, because the British had given it a wrong name. They, because they were under the impression that Tarmal was built by Shahidan. So this inscription, which refers to a beautiful shivaling, must be uh, concerning that Bhateshwar, which is about 18 miles from Agra. But Bhateshwar has a number of important And while this inscription refers to it, Tarmal as a wonderful building, in which Shiva, when uh, uh, consecrated, he never wanted to go to the uh, yes. Kailas, which is rocky hill, uh, hill above. So these two written inscriptions I have quoted in my book. One is the Persian, uh, there are two Persian, one is the uh, extract from the uh, Bhatshanam, and the second is that uh, orange letter which he wrote to Shah Jan. Where and did you get this uh, orange letter? Orange letter. How could you get that? Ah, uh, that is in the National Archives. All these Persian uh, chronicles and letters, they are in the National Archives in Delhi. And also, they, they might be in the Khudabak Library in Patna, and perhaps in. Uh, Osmania uh, University, Nadigal University, etc. Uh -huh. So, in archaeology, we are Hindu. We are not going to be able to do this. We are not going to be able to do this. Okay. So, we are going to be very happy when I wrote that book. Uh -huh. uh, first, I started this. So, what is the book? 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 जहाँ हम टिकट निकालते हैं अंदर जाने के लिए, वहाँ का ऑफिस है उनका, और एक सुपरिंटेंडेंट होता है, तारमाल का सुपरिंटेंडेंट, ये सिर्फ चंदस ऑफिस, हम ही एस क्लास, और उसके बाद चपरा से होते हैं, और वो सारी चाबियाँ इतने कमरों की, वहाँ लटके ही होते हैं, जैसे यहाँ लटके हैं। अच्छा, कमरों की � तो वहाँ के लोग इतने इतने उकसा बाप चुप चाप आये हैं आप जो देखना चाहे हम बता देंगे तो मैं जब वहाँ मैं तीन चार बार गया and because they were very favourable to this discovery तो उन्होंने अरे भाई उकसा भाई उनको चाबी लेके एक चपरासी को कहे चाबी लेके उकसा जो देखना चाहते हैं बता दो तो मैं फोटोग्राफर को भी लेके साथ गया था आठवासु की मूर्ति बाहर आने लगी। अष्टवासु। तो वो घबरा गया। जो तारमाल तो शाहजन ने बनाया कहते हैं और ये आठवासु की मूर्ति आ गई। तो he asked the director general the direct क्योंकि ऐसा है ये आर्कोलॉजी के साथ उन्होंने डिवाइडेड इनके इनके सेवेन पार्ट और सेवेन by फॉल्सु। हाँ ये बस ठीक। Okay uncle you say the same thing after one two three in English ठीक है? Now, a question My basic research conclusion is that every so-called mosque and tomb, not only in India, throughout the world, which is a spectacular historic monument, is a captured Hindu building. So even in Jerusalem, Dome on the Rock and Al-Aqsa are Hindu temples, which have been misused as mosques. So similarly, Taj Mahal, 
was the Shiva temple which is being missed, which was uh, requisitioned by Shah Jahan from the Maharaja of Jaipur who owned that building and converted into a tomb. He removed the Shivalinga, threw it out and there constructed uh, his wife's tomb and he closed and barred all the uh, rooms, the thousands of rooms which are in that seven-story building. Rajmul faces south. Huh. <coughs> the Yamuna runs at the back. And on both sides of the, because Taj Mahal is white, but on both sides there are buildings which are seven stories, both are seven stories. The left hand side is the west, when you approach the Taj Mahal. The left hand side seven story building and which is of saffron color, which is a Hindu color. So on both sides of the Taj Mahal are seven story buildings. And the now Muslim mosques should not be seven stories. What is the point? Because if somebody is uh, reciting namaz, offering namaz on the ground floor, and if somebody is walking, that's insulting. That's against. So, but how the Muslim? Because they are misusing the seven story building, saffron colored seven story building on the west as a mosque. Therefore, they are asked that uh, what is that other? seven to building on the east. So that, that is a jabab, that is a uh, similar building. But that is foolish. Because if the seven story building on the east is not a mosque, then the seven to building on the west is also not a mosque. So these buildings were used as dharmashalas when uh, Taj Mahal was a Shiva temple. Then Katha, Kirtan, Pravachan, or Pangat mein log bekte te for uh, meals, etc. So those seven story buildings on the other side, they are an additional proof that the Taj Mahal is not at all a mosque. That is when you buy a ticket at the entrance, at the entrance gate of Taj Mahal and go inside, there is a long garden and in the center of the garden is a marble uh, uh, because it was a Congress government, a pro-Muslim government, therefore they didn't like my research and they sent two CIDs to my house. When they heard that, uh, it was just before I wrote the book Taj Mahal, but I had told many people that I am going to write a book on Taj Mahal. So the CID in Delhi came to my house and he said, they said, well, look here, Mr. Oh, we are thinking, uh, we are told that you are going to write a book on Taj Mahal. I said, yes. So, they said, uh, the government can arrest you and so on. So I said, doesn't matter, when I publish the book, then you can see. So, actually, when I publish the book, the CID, they closely examined every, every line and every word that I had said. And they were so impressed that the next day they came doing namaskars to me. That Mr. Oak, we were, we were very surprised and shocked that without inciting any communal feelings, you have given these 118 proofs. And that's why the CID was very happy. So that is why, uh, under the, if there is a government law that they give, um, the, uh, the sanction or the license to printing presses on the condition that every book that you publish you must send two copies to the CID for examination. So when the CID, the CID themselves told me this rule. When they heard that I am going to write a book on Tarma, they said, Mr. Oak, you will have to submit two copies to the CID within two months of publication. So. Some of the printing, that, that is the responsibility of the printing press, not of the author. Mm -hmm. So they said, of course, the responsibility is on the mm, printing press which publishes your book. So I said, all right, then he will send it. So the CID were on the watch. He, Mr. Oak is going to write a book on Taj Mahal and perhaps he will incite, him, incite communal feeling. So they were keeping a watch. Mm -hmm. And because for a press, uh, press, printing press. It is very routine 
because he uh, prints uh, invitations, marriage invitations, and visiting cards, and so on. So he didn't, within two months, he didn't send me. So this year he sent me notice. Show cause why you may not be prosecuted because this book of Dharma, which we have heard and seen, you are not sent to cause. So that owner of the printing press came very agitated, he came to very uh, afraid and agitated. He said, Are you Oksar? He said, 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 He the CID very minutely examined every word that I had written. And they were so happy. Though after reading the book, they came to me with doing, you know, folding their hands in the Namaskar style and Miss Desh and Miss Rope were highly impressed. That we have not at all said even a word against the Muslims. We have simply pointed out the historical proofs and we are very happy. I want to convey a very important message to all to all these uh, literary persons or professors and professors of literary and universities that the entire Muslim history throughout the world is totally false because Arabia is a Sanskrit word, Muhammad is a Sanskrit word, Ahmad is a Sanskrit word and one very important thing which the world should know that every Muslim country has a rule that now for instance Syria, Syria, Arabia, all Iran, Iraq, they have a rule not to say even a word as to what was the civilization before that country was converted to Islam. So this is such an important thing that the UNESCO, United Nations Education, Scientific and Cultural Organization, it ought to compel all Muslim countries to discover and teach because that history is already there, but they have suppressed it. For instance, Iran, Iraq, Syria, Arabia, etc. Nobody is allowed to say even a word as to when this country was converted to Islam. Because after all, Muhammad declared Islam in 622 AD. So before 622, there was no country which was Islamic. And in 622, when Muhammad declared, it was only Arabia which was Islamic. But Iran, Iraq, Syria, Turkestan, they were converted later. But those countries and the, all the intellectuals are totally barred from saying even a word as to what was their culture before they were converted to Islam. That is one thing. And what cruel methods were used to compel them to become Muslim, those countries. So this is a very serious matter. That the whole world is being cheated and the Muslim world is being cheated. They are not being told what was their civilization before conversion. And this is by uh, under the threat of torture. So recently in Iran, somebody <coughs> raised a question about uh, their pre-Muslim and he was immediately uh, silenced. He was stoned to death or something. So this is a very serious matter. And representatives of all countries who are on UNESCO. They have to raise this question that all Muslim countries must to be compelled to teach all history, pre-Muslim history, post-Muslim history and how those nations were converted to Islam. <coughs> See to Bombay. Hmm. One Arab man was sitting there. I didn't know that he was Arab. But he was an Arab and he was conversation with me. कि भाई आप कौन हैं क्योंकि हम टैक्सी में बैठे थे और दो तीन घंटे हमको बात करनी थी तो अब वो नया था यहाँ उसका कोई पहचान का नहीं था तो वो मेरे से बातचीत उसने शुरू की भाई आप कौन हैं कहाँ रहते हैं तो वो मेरा दोस्त बन गया है ना तो वो एक दिन मेरे यहाँ है तो मैंने हम हमें एक � और मैंने उसको कहा कि देखो भाई तुम अरब जब मुसलमान हो जब मगर उसके पहले का इतिहास आपको नहीं पढ़ा था तो वो बोला मिस्टर वो सही राइट बट प्लीज डोंट सेंड योर मैगजीन टू आवर कंट्री वो वहाँ कस्टम्स के पास आते ही बल्ला हो गए इतना टेरर है मुस्लिम कंट्री क्या डोंट सेंड योर बुक्स 
annual journal हम निकालते हैं annual annual journal अच्छा annual journal हाँ annual journal जी of the institute for research in world history ये जो I want all scholars throughout the world to establish a world wide heritage academy to tell the Christians Christian countries that Christianity was founded in 2002 that is 2002 years ago so before 2002 years ago there was no Christianity and because Islam was founded in 622 622 AD therefore before 622 there was no Islam then what was that so Hinduism that is Hinduism is a modern name only confined to India but Vajik culture and Sanskrit language has been the human heritage for multi-billion years because our calendar, the Vajik calendar it uh, extends to seven Manus and seven Manus amount to multi-billion years so it is only Vajik culture and Sanskrit language which have a history of the entire humanity from the very first generation up to today while Christianity has a history of only 2002 years Islam has a history of only hardly 1400 years that is why all Christian countries have a Sanskrit name um, and all persons like George George is a Garga, we had a Garga you see so that George is a wrong pronunciation because G is pronounced both as Go as God gave to Ganesh, Gopal and J in generator and generator only. So because of that shortage of uh, the alphabet, the <coughs> Europeans have to know that before 2000 years they were all Vajik countries speaking South language. Similarly Muslim countries have to know that before 622 AD they, their forefathers all followed Vajik culture and the names of all even Muslim countries are Sanskrit because Syria is Syria has Sura Asura and Iranam means the salty or uh, barren ground is Iranam so every Muslim country and their scholars and their universities ought to teach the pre-Muslim Sanskrit Vajik history of those countries. Iranam is now what?